I wanted to show a few enhancements that I've made to the pellet fed rocket mass heater. First on the feed tube, I set up the feed control gate so that it could be opened and closed by turning a threaded rod. This allowed to fine tune the pellet feed rate. A couple of turns can make a difference between a fair burn to burning extremely hot. Next I added a gate part way up the feed tube. Originally I was going to make it so the feed control gate could close and let the fire go out, but the pellets would continue to gasify behind the gate. Adding this further away would allow for the pellets to burn out and leave enough space between the fire and gate. I added this flange to the bottom of the feed barrel. It allows for the feed tube to loosely connect into the barrel and float around a bit. This allows me to dump the pellets into the barrel without worrying about moving the feed tube. Inside the feed barrel I installed a sloped artificial bottom so the majority of the pellets would go into the feed tube. I also made a stand which supports the barrel and top end of the feed tube. It only takes a couple of minutes to convert the heater from regular wood burning to pellet burning system. Here's the system burning wood again, but I must say burning pellets is far less time consuming and I'm finding they burn much more consistently and hotter. A little bit of stove paint really cleans up the entire contraption and camouflages my terrible welding job. I also have a couple of other changes that I made to the feed and burn areas. First I raised the feed tube a bit so the pellets drop onto the grate when the feed tube is out of pellets. This helps to make sure all the pellets roll out of the feed tube and reduces the risk of the pellets burning inside the tube and creating a backdraft. Second, I redesigned the restrictor plate so more air is forced over the pellets. The plate can also slide back and forth so I can adjust the amount of air that is entering the system. I find it's best to close it up about halfway when starting to help with the drafting. Then open it all the way once all the pellets are burning. You may recall while filling the foundation hole for the dome, I installed 4 inch corrugated pipe under the floor. Finally you can see how this is being used. Looking at the traditional heater, there is a barrel which radiates out a lot of heat. The exhaust running under the floor which absorbs some of the heat, and the exhaust to the outside where any remaining heat that wasn't absorbed elsewhere is vented. While building the dome, I installed several sections of corrugated pipe and they terminated inside a barrel that was open at floor level. Now it's time to make some major additions to the heater unit. I've made a metal shroud that covers the heater and barrel. It has an opening at one side to let in cool air, a baffle to force more air around the barrel, and then a fan to blow the warm air through the corrugated piping. Next I installed two aluminum radiators. One sits directly on top of the barrel and the other above the blue barrel. These radiators are tied to the existing circulation pump for the aquaponics system and always have water flowing through them. I debated on coiling some stainless tubing inside the barrel, but didn't for two reasons. First the radiators were cheaper than the tubing, and I can easily see the radiators if they are leaking or need any maintenance. Looking at the airflow through the system, the fan draws the room temperature air through the base opening around the barrel. Some of the air is drawn over the baffle area and some around the first radiator. This radiator really gains most of the heat from the hot surface of the barrel top. Next, all the air is drawn through the next radiator, which draws a substantial amount of the heat out of the air. This allows me to just leave a cheap box fan in the system without the risk of melting it. The cooler air is forced through the ground where the remaining heat is absorbed under the floor and exhaust back into the building. The last odd feature I added was to enclose the 8 inch exhaust pipe in a 10 inch section of pipe and put in a blower fan. This works well, especially when the heater has been running a long time and the floor temperature along the exhaust is basically saturated. Taking a look at the cover, it has a steel frame and is then covered in sheet metal. Each section can be easily screwed to the other pieces so that I can dismantle it if the rocket heater needs any maintenance. This is the center baffle sliding into place which is used to force the air around the barrel and then down through the fan. Here is a shot of the top radiator on the barrel before I added the back cover. And this is the front side of the heater where the second radiator is mounted. 
The box fan just sits on top of the blue barrel that was buried in the floor. The front cover quickly attaches so I can access the radiator or fan. The water lines for the radiators tap off the main pump line that circulates the water through the aquaponic system. It first goes through a screen filter to reduce some of the solid buildup in the radiators, which at some point I'm sure I will need to flush. Then there will be two lines that run to each radiator, and the return lines then merge and drain directly back into the fish tank. Here are some of the temperatures from one particular run. A 40 pound bag of pellets will typically burn for 6 to 7 hours. On this day I ran this system on an overcast day to minimize the temperature increase from solar gain. The outside temperature was 29 and inside was 55. The air temperature above the first radiator was 226. Keep in mind that the barrel temp is exceeding 500, which is the limit of my infrared thermometer. The air drawn down before it reaches the fan is 189 so some heat is radiating through the cover heating the dome air. After the air is drawn through the second radiator, the temperature drops to 98 degrees and then enters under the floor. The normal ground temperature for this area is 52 degrees, so the ground is acting like a thermal mass and is currently at around 57 degrees. Keeping the fan running while the heater isn't running helps to maintain the air temperature at about 50 degrees during the night when it drops below freezing outside. The cover over the exhaust helps to heat the air temperature to 94 while the exhaust vents out of the building at 101 degrees. The water entering the radiators is 60 but exits at 81.4. Hoping I did the math correctly, this equates to using a 4.4 kilowatt per hour heater or 15,000 BTUs per hour to heat the water. The fish really enjoy bathing in the warm water that's coming in from the heater. So far, the balance between heating the water, floor, and air is working well, but the true test will be when the weather gets really cold in January. Thanks for watching. There will be more updates about the Rocket Mass Heater in the future.